Oh, that's right. We're right here. Sharp Facets Gallery, 406, 407 in the afternoon. Gosh, it's sunny out there. Really has uh, turned into a beautiful day. Hey, I'm Ann Eller, and I am looking at some beautiful pieces of uh, custom-made pottery right here. I tell you what, uh, you are in for a treat if you have not been on the Heritage Trail Pottery Tour and Sale. you got to listen up. I hope you're going to be uh, going to it and being part of it because there certainly is a something for everyone. Today I have Donna Boasian, Laura Bachinski, and Pamela Cadlick. Is that right? Okay, I did it. All right, we got three, three, three ladies here, all into pottery, all wanting to share their story and tell us about what's going to be happening this weekend. So um, many of you may know Laura because she always is donating bells everywhere to every event that I think I've ever been part of, particularly the soup kitchen one. Yes. She's done a lot with that, Laura. Mm -hmm. And you know, one of, it, one of the things I was reading in your bio is that you're trying to create the perfect bell. Have you ever created the perfect bell? No. <laughs> when you know it, when you create I, it. I don't know if I would know it, I, I guess. You know, each time I make one, it has a different sound, a different tone to it. Um, it depends on the shape. I know when I haven't made the perfect bell. Bong. Bong. Or it doesn't <laughs> ring. Or, yeah. Um, not yet. Not yet. It gives me something to work towards. To strive towards. <laughs> Do yes. you do other things besides bells? I do. I do a lot um, of functional work. I do bowls, baking dishes, um, d dinner sets, dinnerware, mm -hmm. mugs, uh, berry bowls. That's a uh, very popular thing. It's like a ceramic colander, so you can use it for your strawberries and blueberries, and the water drains out the bottom. Sure. That's cool. Mm -hmm. Well, um, we're going to be talking to Laura here about more about what she does, but I've got Donna Boasian here pulling on my arm saying, I want to say something to Anne. Come on now. <laughs> Anne, how dare you? <laughs> Donna, how are you doing today? I'm great, Anne. Yeah, I know, I know. I was just having a little fun here today. Now, Donna, how long have you been doing pottery? Well, this last time, about eight years, uh, when I moved to Green, uh, Greenwood, I wanted to get back into some sort of craft. And pottery was always something I enjoyed, and also uh, linoleum block printing. So what I did was combine the two crafts that I really enjoyed and put them together and sort of creating my own style. Absolutely. Now, one of the things that uh, y'all are graduates of uh, Piedmont Tech's pottery program. Well, Laura's Laura's a full graduate. A full graduate. Um, Pam, I, I, Pam I and got I my certificate. Yeah, okay, yeah. and yes. Pam and I kind of like you know. They we dabbled. Yeah, we dabbled. <laughs> <laughs> we're not serious students. They were not as serious a student as I was. No, no. <laughs> they they yes. actually didn't have to keep going. They were so good. They were so good. Yeah. As you try to create the perfect bell, right? Right. right. <laughs> I'm still struggling. But yes, we all have attended. Yeah. The it's a Piedmont great program, Tech pottery isn't it? program. It's a very good program, and we had, uh, we all started with the original group and the original teacher, Gary Clontz, uh, mm -hmm. out of Clyde, North Carolina, and he was here five years, and uh, we, you know, we all were learning together basically. Sure. So we established pretty pretty tight knit community of potters in Edgefield County and Greenwood County. You know, I think one of the neat things about Gary is that he came from the Asheville, from the mountains, mm -hmm. and of course where crafts are really, really big, and he brought that down here to uh, Piedmont Tech, to Edgefield in that area. Exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. It was a good, it was a good fit sure. for a lot of us. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Now, how, how big is the studio down there, Donna? The studio I'm, in Edgefield? In Edgefield. Yeah. I mean, uh, how many potters can think, work at one time? I think they, they have at least 20, about 20 wheels. Mm -hmm. Wow. And, um... And, and since Gary's been there, there have been two um, instructors, uh, Justin Guy, who is going to be on our tour, on the Heritage Trail Pottery Tour, and currently um, Thomas Cool is the instructor there now. And um, Justin's had experience all over the world. He's traveled to Asia and did pottery um, apprenticeships there. And Thomas has come from New York and has been very involved in the pottery community where he's been. So the, um, the school's really supported developing the program and wanting to bring in some experienced potters sure. you know, for the students. Yeah, no, no, that's great. Now, we also have a new person here that I don't think I've ever talked to before, Pamela Cadlick. How are you doing today, Pam? I'm doing great, thank you. 
And I understand that uh, you actually are from Virginia, and you've been out there in the world uh, for many years. You became a professional trainer of animals, dogs? Dogs, yes, a gun dog trainer, working spaniels primarily. Doing a great job on Gracie today. She settled right down. <laughs> I am so impressed. That was all you're doing. <laughs> yeah, dogs out like a light over there. <laughs> <laughs> all right. But um, uh, what made you get into training dogs? Oh, I, my, my, my uh, family had dogs when I was a child. I actually was, used to show dogs, showed Afghan hounds, and worked for professional dog show handlers. Mm -hmm. And then my, my ex-husband was a hunter, and I got into training his Labrador, and then I got a Boykin Spaniel. And so are you still training dogs? Oh, yes. Today? That's yeah. my primary profession is a dog trainer. Pam is not going to say this on her own, so I'll say it. But okay. She's very well known in the dog community for her Boykin Spaniel. She's got a ch big time champion. Big dog. time champion? Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. How about that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you know when I was growing up I always said I wanted to raise Afghan hounds in uh, St. Bernard's. Boy did I change oh, my, my mind. mind. <laughs> <laughs> <Good thing. laughs> okay, it's all about sharing a little bit about ourselves here today. I grew up and said no, no. Uh, uh, Afghan hounds are beautiful. They are beautiful. Yeah, yes. Exactly. So what made you get into pottery? Um, I've always worked with my hands, and they offered a night class at, at Piedmont Tech, and I took a night class and got hooked. Got hooked. Yeah. I understand you found it as good stress relief. Very good stress relief. Yeah. yeah. So I finished training dogs in the morning and go out to the studio and can throw some clay, and if it doesn't work out, I could just throw it against the wall and start <laughs> over again. <laughs> Get that mad at a dog? Can no, you? <laughs> you can, but you can't take out. Yeah, yeah, you can't <laughs> trouble it. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Speaking of that, I do want to mention today is the last day over there at Food Lion, where they are uh, taking do uh, buy a bag of dog food or bags of dog food and leave them at the door up there, and they will uh, get them to the Humane Society. We also here at Sharp Facets have been collect anything that we have sold or bought here this month. We're taking a percentage of that. And tomorrow we'll be over there at Food Line buying oh, some great. dog foods. Yeah, yep. so, exactly. Humane Society does need all the help they can get. But um, now, it, just out of curiosity, what does it take to train a gun dog? I mean, what is the, what is the, is this so that we they don't have enough time? Well, <laughs> that's right, but is it to make them so they don't flinch? No, it's, it's, it's instilling the natural ability of the dog that already wants to retrieve mm -hmm. and teaching it how to stay steady, wait for the gun to fire, go pick up the bird, bring it back, and put it in your hand. And this is the part I'm having a problem with with Gracie. Have you got a little time? Because she, <laughs> she loves to go get things, but right. she doesn't want to give it back. She loves to prance around like, I've got it, and you don't. That's right. <laughs> we'll talk after the show. Okay. <laughs> All right. Sounds like it's a few sessions, maybe. Yeah, exactly. But you know, I was very impressed with your with your uh, pottery, Pam. Uh, people, I know they can't see this except if you go to the video, you'll be able to see it. And if you go to your studio, which is on the tour, but um, you put actually impressions of the dogs or animals on your pottery. Yes, ma'am. You take I take a photograph of your pet and put it on pots, uh, dog bowls, plates, mugs, whatever you like. Yeah, and I understand, Laura, you said it's so lifelike, it's it's kind of scary, right? Well, it is, my son came home from school, and um, I was saying earlier to Ann that potters often um, swap work, but trade work back and forth as opposed to buying it from each other. So I had made a bell for um, Pam for her studio, and in turn she made uh, three dog bowls for my three dogs, and they have absolutely lifelike images of them at the bottom of the bowl, and my Son thought it was a little odd that they were eating at the balls with their own faces in the bottom. Well, did they of it. recognize their faces? They seem to. So <laughs> they don't eat out of each other's bowls, so I think that must mean something. But it, 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 it's really fabulous the detail that she puts into the bowl. It's a great um, keepsake. Mm -hmm. it, it would be great for as a as a memorial to a, to a dog that you have had in the past sure um, it would be great for ash for urns for ashes um, anyway she, it's really very good and yeah. I think Pam also didn't mention that she used to be a taxidermist so I think that also helps with the way she yeah, captures great. the animals on the on her pottery okay 
All right, well, here we are. We are here with Pam Cadlack, and we are here with Laura Baczynski, and we are here with Donna Boasian. We're going to be talking about all the different places you'll be able to go this weekend. Friday night, they are having a party at the museum to introduce everything, so we're going to be talking about that. So don't you go away. We'll be right back. Oh, that's right. It's Tuesday afternoon, and we are talking about pottery here this afternoon. We have, uh, we have a great group. We're talking about it. It's the second Heritage Trail Pottery Tour and Sale. Keyword, sale is the second part <laughs> right. here. Right. Keyword, <laughs> sale. <laughs> now, uh, Donna, just out of curiosity, you know, I guess when you go to do a sale, you've got to get pieces accumulated in everything. Have you had to work and add some extra pieces here for this? Oh, yes. All of us have, have uh, been working really hard. Kilns are being fired daily, sure. uh, you know, between Edgefield and Greenwood, and um, the majority of potters, and I'm talking about myself, are procrastinators. Mm -hmm. So, you know, people such as myself wait till the last month, mm -hmm. knowing for a year that this is going to be happening, and then work 14-hour days trying to get the accumulation of, of product to sell. Yeah, I mean, I, I've heard this uh, even when uh, Empty Bowls has been going on and yes. everybody commits to do X amount of bowls and at the last minute they're running around trying to get all these extra bowls together. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. so uh, that's uh, I think that's human nat nature though. But um, Donna, you work in a studio with a group. Where's your studio at? I do. Um, the studio that I'm with is on the grounds of Wyatt Farms, and that's at 550 Center Street, right behind Walmart. And there are five of us in the studio that um, it's a co op. Mm -hmm. And usually we're there seven days a week. Oh. So, how is it to work in a group? The majority of the time is great because you can really, it's like being in an art studio. You can kind of feed off of each other, sure. get ideas, and if you have a problem, you can ask another person and they usually can solve that problem for you. So majority is good, but sometimes when you're in that zone, yes, and I don't mean the zone of the ghost movie that Anne was referring to. I was going to bring that up, the ghost no. movie. Everybody knows Patrick Swayze. Come on, Don. That's not the right zone. <laughs> oh, I don't know about that, Donna. <laughs> Come on now, Donna. But sometimes when you're in that... Can I get you a glass of wine, Donna? <laughs> exactly. Hey. <laughs> but sometimes when you're in that zone that you're really involved in throwing on the wheel or decorating your piece, it would be nice to work by yourself just sure. to be able to stay in that kind of cocoon that you create when, sure. you're, when you're working on something. You know, they always show working at that wheel, you know, as uh, you can either be a, a flop or, or you can create something. How long did it take you, Donna, just to, you know, to be able to do that magic on the wheel? I don't do magic on the wheel. You don't? No, uh, I, I'm not a wheel thrower. You're not a wheel I mean, I, I was throwing on the wheel, mm -hmm. but it was too frustrating for me <laughs> because I wanted to get to the decorating. I mean, okay. you know, I'm a designer, right. so I wanted to get to the decorating of the piece. Yes. So I do more what they call uh, hand building, uh, slab work, and some coil, and then I spend Is my that time. Like making a loaf of bread? Nah. <laughs> nah. But I spend my time then actually decorating the surface. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, but these two are the wheel throwers. Wheel throwers. Yes. Okay. All right. Now, you did, Donna, I just want to talk about, you did this wonderful piece. What can you tell us about it? I mean, you're talking about decorating. Oh, I'm sorry. That was this one right here, the plate here. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about how, how you go about, I mean, because that looks like, um, how did you do it? Well, uh, what, the process that I use is called scraffito, and scraffito is actually drawing and carving into clay. Um, and I use porcelain clay. And then I paint on greenware a black or a colored underglaze, like a temper paint. Okay. That dries, and then I take carving tools and carve my design through it. And all my designs are freehand. I don't use stencils or anything. I just, half the time I don't even have a plan. I just start, start drawing on the piece. Um, and so a lot of people know my work from it being black and white. Mm -hmm. But... Last year, I started playing with color, 
and I stayed with black and white because I was afraid of color. Mm -hmm. So now I'm now you I'm overcome your fear. I think I have. Okay. <laughs> so now I've been experimenting with color. So yeah. for the tour this year, people are going to see my black and white, but they're also going to see color in some of my pieces. And I'm also using a low fire red clay instead of just the porcelain clay. Right. So you know, kind of changing it up. We all have to you know, move on to some other level. Um, we love what we do, but you can get bored, so it's like, what else could I incorporate? Sure. Well, they are, they are wonderful pieces, and the fact that you don't have any uh, preconceived ideas and you don't work from a stencil or something, that's pretty amazing, Donna. That's, that's well, that's the background of being, an, you know, an artist. Sure. You know, being an art teacher and things like that, yeah. Yeah, well, it makes a difference. Mm -hmm. It does. Well, they're fabulous pieces. This is Donna Boasians. You work over at the studios at Partners uh, in Clay. Partners in Clay. At Wyatt Farms, and that's in Greenwood at 550 Center Street. That's right. Wyatt Farms over there. Great place over there. So we've got uh, Donna here. Then um, Laura. Now you work by yourself. Yes. Yes. Happily. What's the What's the advantages <laughs> of that? You don't well, have to work well and yeah, play well I with don't others. Have to play well with others. <laughs> um, which sometimes is difficult to do for me. Um, <laughs> now, for anybody um, I think two things are great about my working space. One is it's literally right outside my back door. Mm -hmm. So when need be, I can run out there in my pajamas and check the temperature on the kiln, and I don't have to you know, travel anywhere to, to check on my work. Um, and then I'm in and out all day long. And there is a disadvantage to not having somebody to bounce ideas off of. But for me, I, I really enjoy my solitude, and I work well when I'm uninterrupted. And you know, sometimes I just I don't answer the phone. I, I go out there as if it's my job, and my job is to sit at the wheel for six hours and throw what I need to throw. Um, do you happen to get in the zone? I do Donna get does? in the zone. Okay, just I do it. get in the zone, and I am a wheel thrower. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, and and I think that the as far as you know, be working in a solitary environment, we have developed a pretty good um, uh, working relationship among all of the potters that are in our guild. Both the Gasp, the Greenwood area studio potters, and then Edgefield has a has a guild, the Edgefield area clay guild. Um, so it is not uncommon for us to text each other, you know. I get pictures from you know another potter who actually works in Johnston, who's going to be at my place um, for the tour this weekend. You know, look at this crack that happened. What do you think happened? Uh, and I'll do the same thing to him. He and I work similarly, so you know we can bounce ideas off each other that way. Um, but I do, I do like my space, and, and my space is you know, it's out in the country. It's in an old renovated barn. I have my three dogs, my donkeys, my goats, and you know I sort of. Do your pretend own thing. I have this idyllic life out there. <laughs> <laughs> pretend well, being pretend the king we're earned. Right, exactly. <laughs> I, I understand. I think that's great. Now, um, your your place is on the tour. Yes, it's um, my studio name. It, studio is called Bell House Pottery, after the uh, inspired by the bells that I like to make. And um, I actually there will be nine of us at my studio, including myself. Wow. Um, I have two. Um, couples that are coming that work together in their own studios. Um, Robert Taft, who is from Greenwood, currently um, taking classes in Edgefield. Dolores Newson, who was featured in the newspaper this morning, uh, who does a combination of stoneware and sweet ba uh, grass baskets. Tim and Diane Miller, who are coming from Johnston. Edna Ruff is uh, from Abbeville, and she'll be there. Barbara Warner is from Greenwood. And um, Donna and Jim Connolly, who are also from 96. My studio, Bell House Pottery, is in 96 on Epworth Camp Road, between 25 and 178. You know, one of the things that I think would be kind of interesting is husband and wife teams working together on pottery. That would be a way to describe it. I, they do they do well with that. <laughs> well, they do. And, and both of them have taken classes. Both sets of couples have taken classes in Edgefield and go to workshops and have done workshops separately and together. and. 
Wow, that's cool. Yeah. So well, they've done well. Well, we are here talking about the second Heritage Trail Pottery Tour and Sale. It is going on this weekend. We're going to talk more about it when we come back, but right now it's time for South Carolina News and a word from our sponsors. Don't you go away. Um, are you a pirate or a pack rat? Do you have a vacation of a lifetime sitting in the attic? Or a college tuition hung on a wall? Or is a fabulous retirement hidden in your jewelry box? Bring those items to Sharp Facets Gallery. We can establish value and buy from you or sell for you. And so ends another chapter at Sharp Facets Gallery. 72 Bypass and on the web, sharpfacets.com. That's right. We're right back here, Sharp Facets Gallery. It is Meet Me at the Diner, and today at the diner, we have three ladies that are into pottery in really big ways. Pamela Kadlik, Laura Baczynski, and Donna Boasian. And coming up this Saturday and Sunday, it is, you know, this would be a great thing. Put the kids in the car and just make an adventure of the day. Go around and see the different pottery places. They're here in Greenwood and the 96 and all the way to Edgefield, right? That's that right, correct. Donna? Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and over in Edgefield, they're going to be opening up this groundhog kiln. What, what's that all about? Well, um, you know, with the rich uh, history of pottery in Edgefield um, that dates back before the Civil War, there were these kilns, and they were called Grandhog kilns, and uh, they have found, they have uncovered some of those kilns in Pottersville, which was the area where the slave Potters community was in Edgefield County. And about uh, four years ago, Gary Klontz and Justin Guy and, and cord uh, with the Edgefield Historical Society built a Groundhog kiln, and they fire it up. Right. And it's not just you put ten pieces in it. You put two or three or four hundred pieces in well, this. How big kiln. is this? Um, I don't know how deep this is, but it's probably about uh, fifty feet deep. You have to get on your hands and knees and crawl in to put the pots in. And it's a wood-fired kiln. Wow! And they're going to start firing it tomorrow, and then Saturday morning at nine o'clock. They, um, Justin Guy and some other folks will be unloading the kiln so people can come and Justin can talk to you about the groundhog kiln, how it works, and you can see pots coming out of the and finished that, piece. And that'll be over in Edgefield. That will be in Edgefield. And it would be a great mm -hmm. place to start because that's actually earlier than the tour. It start, that will happen at 9 a.m. and this tour, the studios on the tour will open at 10. So from there, you could go to Pam's um, to Pam's studio or to Turtle um, Rock. Rock. Turtle Rock. I wanted to say Creek. Turtle Rock. <laughs> um, you know, and visit there, and then move along the tour up into Greenwood. Sure. So uh, start out early. You know, I, I think Edgefield certainly, with all the turkeys and everything, uh, they really have done a lot down there in mm -hmm. Edgefield. If you haven't been there recently, it's really looking pretty spiffy, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It is. It is. So um, they're going to start that. Now, I think it's very interesting, Dolores, who uh, knew some who you were talking about with the sweet water grass baskets, where does she actually work out of? She works out of her home, mm -hmm. has her own studio space, and she takes classes down at Piedmont Tech. Her work will be available for sale at my studio at Bell House Pottery, oh. so she'll be on the tour there. Now, I was reading in the article, it's getting more and more difficult to get the sweet water grass. Yeah, I think she has a connection. She has family down in Charleston, <laughs> and they, she puts in her order. Um, but yeah, and those, those pieces are, if you have not seen the combination of the pottery with the sweet grass, you, you need to just come out to at least see that, because it's really beautiful. In fact, um, we have a, a, a little pottery giveaway that is happening, and one of her pieces is uh, one of the items available. And um, it's a woven basket of the clay is woven as a basket, and wow. then she puts the grass around the, the top. They're really beautiful pieces. They're wow. great for wedding gifts and Mother's Something Day. Something unique. Mother's Day. That's right. It's only a week away after uh, this weekend. That's right. <laughs> So um, you were talking about the pottery giveaway. A $5 donation earns you a chance to win one of the beautiful pottery pieces. And by the way, if you haven't gotten one of their brochures, you can get them at a lot of the stores uptown. We, we just put some out here at Sharp Facets. You can get them at the museum. 
the uh, art, art center, center, right? Uh huh. Howard's on Main and Mill House. They're both sponsors of our tour, food food sponsors of our tour. Sure. Um, and Uptown Pizzazz. That's probably it. Or you can come by Wyatt Farm. Wyatt Farm has our brochures too. Or you can go on Facebook and just go uh, type in Heritage Trail Pottery Tour and Sale. Nice shorten it. <laughs> but you can download a brochure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And or you'll also be able to if you see do that. You can thing. see Pam has been working on the Facebook page and uploading a lot of photographs of work that will be there. Potters do you know at their studios working. It, it's That's a nice perfect. page to look at. And, and so, what's the name of it again? Heritage Trail Pottery Tour and Sale. All right. So you're going to keep this up after the Heritage Trail Pottery Sale. Well, not so much, but by next year. <laughs> <laughs> Start it up again. Okay, all right. All right, but anyways, you, it would be really, really, really helpful to have one of these brochures. And if, you, if you're unable to get one and you have made a decision last minute, you can look for the signs in town. That You can't miss them. They're bright yellow signs that are posted everywhere from um, where the Wyatt Farm it location is, where Partners and Clay are all through that area, down 25, all the way into Edgefield, and, if, and their red arrows pointing you in the direction of um, the studio where you need to go. The sign is yellow and it has an outline of a black, um, old-fashioned pottery jug. Right. And if you go to the, follow the arrows, you'll wind up at the studio and they'll have brochures there also, which you can pick up and, and continue on sure. from there. So, uh, and once you find one pottery place, it'll be easy to get to any of right. the others. Mm -hmm. So, uh, regardless, and plus you have a, a nice schedule on there telling you when you're going to have things going on. Um, let's see, um, Laura, you're actually doing some wheel throwing lessons. Yes, you'll have a chance to um, get messy and play on the wheel and, and see how easy it is to make <laughs> a bowl. <laughs> a bowl. <laughs> and that'll be out at your place? That'll be at my place on um, Saturday. We're doing it um, at, starting at 11. Usually we do it for about an hour, 11 to 12. And then on Sunday we'll be doing it um, at 2 o'clock. I also see you're doing it at 3 o'clock. Am I? Yes. Oh, yes, I am. Thank you, Anne. <laughs> You're welcome, Laura. <laughs> We're also doing it at 3 o'clock on Saturday. You're having no time to yourself at I've all. just been a little busy this week. <laughs> <laughs> well, Pam, tell us a little bit about your place. Now, you're on the tour. Um, the name of your place is? PK Pottery. PK Pottery. And uh, where is it located? I'm off of Plum Branch Road, okay. going towards Plum Branch. Um, it's only uh, 5.4 miles off of State Road 25. Okay. And um, one of the things we were talking about is it's neat to see how potters live. And I understand you have your dog kennels. Tell us a little bit about your place there. Oh, well, I, I have a, a 10 acres land. I have a pond in my front yard. And there's about 40 Boykin Spaniels going to be there. So you can come out <laughs> and I'll do, I can give you, even give you a dog demonstration if you want to. Yeah, and okay. play with some Boykin Spaniel puppies. Oh, that sounds like fun. And yeah. I have a studio that I've converted a carport, and uh, I have a gas kiln so I, um, that I'll be firing and opening Saturday morning at 10 o'clock. Okay. And so you'll be there. Now, is anybody else going to be at your studio with you? Yes, yeah, so I'll have four other potters with me, uh, James Manning, Michelle Clark, Sandy Stokursky, and Susie Burton. So uh, they'll all have things there. Now, at all the different places, there will be items that are for sale, correct? Correct. Correct. Yes, okay. correct. <laughs> Everything <laughs> is for sale. <laughs> Even we're for sale <laughs> for the right price. <laughs> well, actually, now that you said that, um, we did, all of us, received custom orders from the sale last year. You know, well, people will come and sure. they'll look at, at the pottery that potters, you know, each potter has their own unique style. So they'll sure. look at what people have and and they may see something that um, they like as far as color or shape, and then they think, oh, well, you know, I wonder if they could make that bigger or smaller. And so, sure. so you get a lot of commissions. Mm -hmm. yeah. You get commissions. Exactly. So uh, this is an excellent opportunity. If you've thought about doing something special for even as a gift or for something for your home or for yourself, this is an excellent opportunity to see all, all lots of potters, not all the potters, I guess, but a lot of potters that are involved here. Now, how many potters are there that are part of the Greenwood Pottery Group? 
of the whole tour, there are 20, we have 25. 25. But mm -hmm. how many people are actually, do we in have our our guild? In right. the, in the, ed, in the uh, Greenwood Guild, in the GASP Guild, we have about 32 members currently. Mm -hmm. And um, and the Edgefield Guild, I'm not really sure how many, I want to say about, about 20, 25. Yeah, about that. Mm -hmm. Some of us are members of both guilds. Sure. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, there's a number of us, and that's all happened in the last six years. Mm -hmm. Really has. Yes. Mm -hmm. One of the things about having groups, having less studios, but groups of potters at each studio, is that people can come and they can spend more time. Sure. So, you know, you're instead not like of rushing from one Yeah, place instead to of another. rushing from one place to another, you can go. There's six potters here. Okay, I'm going to spend a couple of hours. Oh, I want to go and talk with this person. My kids are, are going to be on the wheel doing, right. you know, demonstrations and that kind of thing. So it isn't like you've got to be in the car all day. Um, That's it's the great a, it's thing a, about being between here, Edgefield, yes. and here. It's a, it's a short distance. And it's a leisurely, it's a leisurely day. And some people last year... They did Greenwood area on Saturday, and then they went down to Edgefield on Sunday, and vice versa. We had a lot of traffic from Aiken and Augusta, and we believe that we'll have more from those areas this year because we have expanded our promotion of the tour into those areas. And just out of curiosity, what kind of price range are we talking about? I mean, you know, you have items from... What price to what price? What? Just uh, well, if I if I'm if I'm thinking of all the potters right. that are going to be on the tour, we will have things from five dollars mm -hmm. up to about four hundred dollars. Okay, good. So there is something for everybody. Yes. Uh, and there's so many different styles, as Laura said, of the different potters, and so. There, there is always something for everybody. everybody. Absolutely. Well, we are here with the second Heritage Trail Pottery Tour and Sale for this weekend. We're going to hear a word from our sponsors that make all this possible, and we'll be. All right. We're back here, Sharp Passes Gallery this afternoon. We are talking pots, pottery, and it's going to be a great time this weekend. If you're looking for something fun to do, educational, great for the kids and great for yourself, and who knows, you might find a gift or two out there, whether for yourself or Mother's Day or maybe a graduation gift because graduations and... You know, it would make a terrific wedding gift for somebody, and of course this is the season of wedding gifts. The pottery sale itself is Saturday, May 4th from 10 to 5, Sunday, May 5th from 12 to 5. It is rain or shine, doesn't matter, they've got pottery studios all here from Edgefield all the way to Greenwood. They are having a little party Friday <laughs> evening <laughs> at the museum. That's right. It's an opening reception, actually, 5.30 to 7.30. Um, Laura, what can you tell us about that? Well, it's a great opportunity to see samples of work from all the potters that are involved, meet most of the potters. Most of them will be there at the reception. We potters are notorious for putting together good spreads of food, all served on handmade pottery. So mm -hmm. you can see it in in the works. Um, so there'll be uh, wine and um, soft drinks available, and all sorts of little hors d'oeuvres and sweets. And it'll be a great chance to come by and meet Check us all. Out. Mm -hmm. That's right. And you'll have the brochures there, and it'll be yes. a great way to be able to decide who or where you want to go and set up your tour. Absolutely, yes. You know, the beauty of this tour is you're not, you don't have to do it one way. You right. can do it any way you want. You can go to, to Edgefield, you can start here in Greenwood, you can start over at the Bell House, you can start at Turtle, what's that, what's it? Turtle, Turtle Rock. Turtle, Turtle Rock. Rock. Well, now, where is Turtle Rock? She's on Meeting Street in Edgefield, mm -hmm. and um, she's got a great place. She also has a gas kiln. That'll be something interesting that people will see. There are a number of us that fire electric um, kilns, and then um, a few people who fire with gas kilns. So okay, nice. we have a gas kiln. Yes, does right. Justin um, Guy does in at Old Edgefield Pottery, and, and Beth. Um, Beth Thornton who is at um, Turtle Creek. Turtle Rock. Turtle Rock. <laughs> Turtle Rock. <laughs> Turtle Creek does. I think there's a creek there too, but I she does have a rock with turtles on it. Um, I think there is a Turtle Creek, isn't there? there? Is. <laughs> I know there is. She also is having live music on Sunday from 12 to 5 with a group, um, a duo, Linda and Ron, and they are fantastic. 
And they, they play around Lawrence and Greenville mm -hmm. and sort of Greenwood. Sort folk mm -hmm. music, so that would be a nice yep. thing to do. So uh, if you want to start your tour, start it Friday night right there at the museum, 5.30 to 7.30. They are going to have uh, different uh, pieces there that they'll be showing. Now one of my questions is, um, the pottery, is it, can you put it in the dishwasher or how do you have to care for it? You're talking about all these pieces that you'll be showing. How do you care for it? Most of what we make is dishwasher, microwave, and oven safe. Okay. Um, if you have a question about that, you should ask the, each specific potter that, sure. you know, that you purchase things from. But most of us are working in what we call mid to high fire stoneware, and that is very, very durable. Well, okay. So uh, that's one thing you want to make sure of before you walk out with a piece and, or... Right. right. And potters want people to use their pieces. They don't want you to buy a bowl and put it on the shelf and look at it and say, isn't that a beautiful bowl? They want you to eat your pasta out of that bowl every Wednesday night and, every, and ah. enjoy it <laughs> and use it and love it. And, um, and if it chips, get a new one. Now, Laura, you made this bowl right here. That, yes. Yes. Now, um, it's it looks like it's uh, carved into it. How yes. Did, and it's not it's not a bell, is it? No, it's not <laughs> a bell. Although, <laughs> if you turn it upside down, down, you might be able to. No, it um it's just a it's serving bowl or salad bowl, um, a potpourri bowl. You could use it for anything really. And um, I do like to do carving in my pieces. Um, I I like working with surface decoration. I do some also some wax resist work. How did you get into pottery? I mean, Donna now, she was an art teacher, did all this. How did you get into pottery? I started when I was living in Augusta. Before we moved to Greenwood, um, there was a woman who was teaching classes in her studio in her backyard. And I started there and, um, and then came here. When we moved here, I put uh, my studio together with really not knowing very much about what I was doing. Mm -hmm. And um, after living here, I guess we were here about two or three years um, when the program in Edgefield opened up. And it was actually advertised in national ceramic magazines. So I knew about it and started taking night classes there. Well, then I quit my job and became a full-time potter. <laughs> quit your job. I did. I absolutely quit my job and became a full-time potter. <laughs> that's a whole nother story. That's a whole nother story. <laughs> All right. So, uh, <laughs> So do you make money on your pottery? Do you make money? I break even. You break even. It's always nice for potters to be able to um, pay for their materials. I think that's what we all try to do. Um, a lot of people can make great money with their pottery. You have to, but you have to be willing to work at it full time as if it were any other job. Sure. And um, and we know a number of potters who that's what they do, but, but, and they do pretty well for themselves. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Now, um, Pam, you of course are going to have your your place set up. This is going to be. Is this the first time, or did you do yours last year? No, I did mine last year. Okay. And the name of your place is PK Pottery. PK Pottery. So you need to go by and see all of these. I tell you what, if you are a pet lover, you have got to <laughs> see what Pam can do for you, what she has done. You were telling me about a platter you made for somebody that had three Labradors and put their names and put the picture. They, they're deceased now. Correct. And it was just a really, really nice memento. Yes, ma'am. And, uh, you know, I think it's exciting that you can do can do all this. There aren't many people that can put uh, two loves together into one. That's pretty amazing. Yes, I, I really enjoy it. It gives me a good release and relax, relaxation to get away from stress of every day and well, I just uh, do smart. Absolutely. Well, she's got her own studio. They're going to have people at all these different places. PK Pottery is at 79 Wood Duck Drive over there in Edgefield off Plum Branch. And like I said, the best way to find out about all of this is probably go tomorrow night to the reception. Friday, Friday night. Excuse me, Friday mm -hmm. night for the reception and pick up a brochure and then uh, go from there and decide where you'd like to go. Exactly. Or if people do have Facebook, go on Facebook and just kind of check it out because like we've got a lot of photos of the studios and of potters working that will be there. So you get a little sneak peek at what's going on this weekend. And if you don't get if you don't get a brochure, 
all you got to do is look for these big yellow signs with a big pot on it, right? <laughs> That's right. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> big red arrows. You can't miss them. <laughs> They're all over Uptown and heading out to Wyatt Farms. I would probably, if you don't get by anywhere else, start maybe at Wyatt Farms. That's an easy location to start at. Right. That's true. And it is the top place, the, the highest place on the map for the, for the tour. Right, right. And everybody pretty much knows where Wyatt Farms sure. is. And we'll have brochures. And we can also help you with the map or help you with, if you're looking for a specific pottery, mm -hmm. we can say, okay, well, you need to go to this studio because there's a potter there that does that type of work. So we'll help, we'll help people guide them into the right areas, the right studios, and the right potters. Now, in the Partners in Clay, I know they have several different uh, venues right there at Wyatt Farms. Is it just... The pottery one, or is there artists there? Or the um, the uh, we share a building with Dr. Roger Stevenson, who is retired from the Genetic Center, and he's sure. a painter. Um, but he graciously gives up his studio to Partners in Clay for this tour. So all of our work is set up inside. So you'll get to view our studio on half the building, and then we'll have our display and sale area in the other half. And White Farms will have a big white tent out also this weekend. So if you kind of forget about this and you're riding by Center Street, you'll see a big white tent. Absolutely. Well, it certainly has been a pleasure to have all of you on. You've got to get out this weekend for the second Heritage Trail Pottery Tour and Sale. It's going on this weekend. Uh, reception at uh, the museum Friday night, all day Saturday, 10 to 5, and 12 to 5, I think it is, on Sunday. Hey, this is WCRS right here in Greenwood. Thanks for coming on, and I wish you all the best of luck this weekend. Thank, Thank you, you Anne. Absolutely. Bye-bye, everybody.